Hey guys, uh, Troy Haynes here um, for our session, scheduled session today by Hacking and Conscious Hacking for Founders. I uh, hope you're excited for this as I am. Um, Ken, I'm just um, pretty new to this tech, so I'm just going to feel my way around just to see, make sure that we are all good. I know what I'm doing and I can give you the best delivery possible. So I'm just going to open up the chat here as well. Um, all right, I'll give it a few more minutes. I, I know we um, had to change the tech on this end. Uh, couldn't get the camera to work, but we're all good now. But um, this is going to be really awesome, you guys. Can't wait to get started. Appreciate you guys hopping on. Uh, we're a couple of minutes away. We'll get started. Um, I think you're going to love it. So hang tight. I just want to make sure that we allow a bit of time so that everyone that was hoping to join can join this. So hang in there. It won't, won't be too long to get started. Just testing the clicker there, yeah, great, awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about this because the reality is, you know, it's I'm a founder myself and it's uh, I know how important it is to be on. Um, but as a meditation and consciousness coach, I also see like there's a bigger pandemic happening on the planet at the moment than, you know, COVID and that's mental health, and it's showing up in the form of, you know, dysfunctional sleep, stress, overwhelm, anxiety, doubt, depression, um, worry. Uh, I'm not sure if any of these are familiar familiar to you, but you know, these are like kind of pre-COVID as well. And it's only gotten worse in our current world. And, you know, this is really heartbreaking for me because I know what it's like to be stuck in that, that, that feeling. It's painful on so many levels. Um, but I also know that feeling of what it's like to move beyond that and to be optimizing myself into higher levels of performance and potential and just generally happiness day to day, well being. It's like waking up each day and working on what I was born to do and not compromising my health, my relationships, my well being. So, and that's what I want to share with you today is like the information I'm going to share is like. I want everyone to be implementing this this sort of stuff. It's 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 one thing to be going after our goals, and that's awesome. But it's not compromising us ourselves as as well as well we go after that. So we're going to get started uh, in a minute. Um, for those that have just joined, uh, I'm Troy Haynes. Um, I'm so excited to get started. Um, just as more people are jumping on, I want to welcome you guys. I think. You know, being a founder is a key part of realizing our ultimate potential. And so many people have incredible ideas, um, but business, is, it's a tough sport, right? It's like learning eight different languages all at once. You've got marketing, sales, administration, human resource, leadership, accounting, operations, uh, product development, and, and more. Um, and I totally get how challenging it is. And I used to suffer through the overwhelm and the doubt, the worry, the anxiety, you know, keeping me up at night, you know, it was painful, which led me to find a better way. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. So the, the webinar, it's officially started a few minutes ago. Um, and But for those of that are just logging in, you know, guys, you're in the right spot. Uh, what I'm going to share with you today, three really important things that are going to help you move beyond day-to-day -day stress, overwhelm, fear, anxiety, doubt, worry, that we're confronted with as founders. And moving to higher states of flow, performance, and working towards realizing higher states of or higher levels of our potential, which is and having like feeding that awesomeness into our into our business goals and and optimizing ourselves from there. So let's get started. So okay, um, so here we go. Like let me let me. Just make sure I've got everything sorted. I think we have, phones off, no noises interrupting us. Okay, awesome. I'm really stoked to be able to share this information with you guys here today. Um, since you signed up for this webinar, I know you're someone who is interested in learning more about biohacking and consciousness hacking and how that might benefit you. So welcome, um, you're amongst like-minded people, but let's just start with a quick definition of, uh, for those that aren't quite uh, up to terms with what what these these concepts mean by hacking and consciousness hacking. So biohacking consists really. This is kind of like my definitions of how I would determine it. 
Biohacking consists of integrating ancient and modern knowledge and practices and new discoveries in biotech and emerging technologies to assess, amplify, and enhance ourselves. It's by making these incremental lifestyle and dietary changes that we can make significant improvements into our health and well-being. So at a biological level. And then consciousness hacking is integrating ancient and modern knowledge and practices relevant to understanding our individual consciousness, like who we are and how we fit into and can influence the broader collective consciousness of humanity. Like a key, key question that we ask ourselves is who am I? What am I part of? What's the meaning of life and what else is, what else is possible? So it's about fundamentally integrating those two. So my, my big goal for you to walk away from this webinar, knowing that no matter where you're at in this journey, you can leverage. Well, it's more than about integrating. It's more about integrating cutting edge technologies, knowledge, discoveries, practices, and with ancient technologies to optimize our sleep, well-being, focus, productivity, and ultimately have a greater sense of meaning and a realization of greater levels of our potential. I'm gonna share with you three key things that ultimately will help you to get started with optimizing yourself whilst you can go after your business goals. So I wanna avoid, I want you to avoid the pitfalls, uh, see the path and feel confident on your journey. I want to essentially help you to get started with consciousness hacking and biohacking so that you can be living a greater sense of meaning, fulfillment, and potential. I hope that's cool. I can't see that there's anybody, um, how many people on here, but um, I'm hoping that there's a, an audience of a thousand plus people out there. So unlike uh, a lot of gurus and experts you see online, I actually live what I'm about to teach you, the things I'm going to share with you, the things that... I know work and they've worked for dozens of my clients also. You could say I know a thing or two about um, how to do this successfully. But I'm the first to admit, though, that when it comes to biohacking, um, I'm not going to profess that, you know, to be like David Asprey, Dave Asprey or Ben Greenfield. Um, for those of you that don't know who they are, they're two of the world's leading thinkers in biohacking and Ben's book, Boundless, it's like this encyclopedia of different biohacks. And to be honest, it can be quite overwhelming. Uh, what I'm going to share with you are some practical steps of how to get started and, and how, to, how to practice these. 250, oh, wow, thanks, Patrick, appreciate that. Um, which is just... Uh, yeah, if, if you just do these things alone that I want to share with you, you know, it, it'll, it's going to change everything. For me, I approach consciousness. Um, I approach this like I'm a, I'm a consciousness hacker first, I would say. Uh, my thirst to understand who I was and what I was part of and, you know, what the meaning of life is and what else was possible had me like doing key things to optimize my body. So fundamentally, it was my pursuit of trying to figure out like the big questions like who I, who I was like how happy I can be, um, that sort of led me to having to do key biohacks to optimise my body so that I could answer those bigger questions for myself. So I'm going to start um, by sharing some of those with you. Um, so before we get started, though, I think it's really important, uh, just I need a couple of things from you guys. You know, if you have a, your mobile phone out, Skype notifications on or Messenger on, Facebook, anything, if you can close it down, I need you to focus just for the next 50 minutes. Um, I need your full attention ideally because if you're not paying attention, none of those things will help um, at the end of the day. So I need your full commitment. I hope that's, I hope that's cool. And look, this webinar isn't about me. It's about you. It's about how you can leverage the next hour of this time to accelerate your goals looking forward. Um, do you know the very best way to do that? It's by having your full attention here. You know, I truly believe our attention is our ultimate power. And by participating, it's applying that power effectively. So I wanna encourage you to participate. Type in the comments, you know, if, if, you, if you're willing just to say, yep, be loud, be proud, let us know. Let me know that I'm not just talking to myself out here. Um, that would be awesome. 
and I'd love to love you to share your insights and comments as we go. Um, and I'm, I'm confident that, uh, you know, there's a whole group of value that we can collectively create within this container that we've got here today. But a huge part of showing up, which is what you've done. If you stay at the end, um, you've got a bonus. I'll hopefully have time to answer questions live. So um, you have a chance to pick my brain on anything that we talk about. Uh, I won't be able to answer questions as we go through because I've got a, a lot to get through. But if you stick around, hopefully we'll have time to answer questions at the end. And so I think this is awesome stuff. Like, I hope you guys get a lot out of it. Um, I'm going to go through it today. I think it's invaluable information. For me, I grew up with an innate sense of suffering. Uh, it wasn't because I had a bad life. It was more that I felt lost in a world and I didn't understand it. I didn't know who I was, um, how I was to play a meaningful part in the world. And the internal, internal suffering I felt was real. It was almost unbearable, and this put me onto the path of self-development. And uh, it was many years of self-development that were pointing to things like meditation as a tool that could help. And so now I've been meditating for 20 years, and I'll talk more about that as, as we go through. And it was through meditation as a practice. And there's a lot of misconceptions around meditation, a lot of dogma around meditation. But for me, I feel like it's one of the, the tools that as entrepreneurs, it, it can change everything. It's taking our attention, our ultimate power outside of that mental noise, that the conditioning, the thoughts, the feelings, the hopes, the fears, the memories that we that, we, that can overrun our cognition day to day and finding that stillness outside. And it's in that stillness that we find the insights and the the awarenesses and the ideas. And for me, that led me like many years of sitting in that stillness to realize that, you know, I had all these ideas. And from there, I ended up starting a startup incubator in Cairns, far north Queensland, which we've had now for uh, eight and a half years as a means to more effectively learn how to commercialize those ideas. And from there, more recently, I've partnered with a group out of Silicon Valley uh, called the Transformative Technologies. They've been running for about six years now. We've been involved for the last two years. And we're building out an ecosystem throughout Australia to help support entrepreneurs and innovators build technologies focused around mental health, well-being, human performance, and human potential. And so the, the vision of transformative technologies is through every transformative technology service and, and product is to help elevate human consciousness. So it's about applying those technologies, practices and knowledge and now learning how to apply them and, and optimise ourselves. And honestly, you know, I feel blessed now to, to have know what I do and have the practices and awareness that I do. Um, I no longer suffer. I get to wake up each day and work on my dreams. I'm mentally and physically fit and I get, uh, I've got a lot of great relationships. I feel genuinely happy and content uh, for, for the part that I'm playing in the world. And my desire is for, to, to share that with people as well, to have others experience what I experience. But it hasn't always been that way. Like my story is a lot, was a lot of dead ends and pain and hopeless moments trying to figure out what was going to work. And, and what wasn't, you know, I was a sensitive, skinny, fair-skinned, pigeon-chested kid uh, growing up in country Queensland who, when I finished school, I had no idea what I, who I was or what I wanted to do or the part that I was going to play in the world or what the, what the world really, really meant. So if you're in any way struggling uh, with any of that, I do want you to know that I, I, I get how you feel. I, I've lived it, but I've also figured out a whole bunch of stuff along the way to move beyond it. And as a founder, it can be challenging. You know, we put ourselves out there and have the courage and having that courage to leave a comfortable job and go after something for ourselves. You know, that's huge. You know, that's um, if you've made that leap, I want, I want to commend you. You know, I also understand the existing culture. We exist in, in the startup space, which is rise and grind, you know, push, 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 burn the candle at both ends, sleeps and inconvenience. Uh, we're on a mission, you know, we've got to fight for our, for our vision, fight for our goals and, you know, 100-hour work weeks. 
But the reality is there comes a point where in the short term where our biology, our biology's performance becomes suboptimal and our output starts to suffer. And time in front of the desk doesn't mean quality output, right? There comes a point in the medium term where our biology starts breaking down and we begin doing serious damage to our bodies and our output. And then there comes a point where in the long term where our biology can give up and breaks and you'll never be the same again. And your options then get really narrowed become very limited in how you can live your life. And I've seen this. It's, it's not pleasant. So I started out um, doing the hard way. I could feel my body was failing, broken sleep, low energies in the morning, drinking way too much coffee and energy drinks, uh, diminishing creativity and problem-solving ability. My mood was affected. My relationship started getting affected. My energy was being affected. And my brain just wouldn't work the way that it would, you know, like I wanted more from my brain. It just wouldn't, wasn't there. You'd put the foot on the gas and there'd be nothing. So not only that, I was seeing in people around me as well, hitting people hitting walls, it's like metaphorically. Many had already hit a wall like really hard, had chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia and being forced uh, by their bodies and their doctors to take serious time off. You know, like our options get very limited there. And I'm here because I, I want so much uh, more than that for you. I, you know, I want to help to avoid that. I know the culture that the startup space is in, but I also know the potential of what else is possible on the other side, which what I'm going to share with you today. You know, over the years I've learned that it can become easy to ma maintain that same output, even higher output, by optimising the body and the mind. And that's really, the, the reality is it's, it's easy when, when you've got the right knowledge, the support and the habits in place, and when you can use other people's shortcuts. And that's what I want to share with you today. You know, which would you rather, the hard way, the rise and grind push and potentially do damage to, to your bodies? And, or would you like to know the, you know the easy way, this new way that I'm going to share with you today? I hope you're going option B. So I want to share with you a secret combination uh, so three key things um, that I feel like can has the potential to change everything for you on so many different levels, on, on the biological level, which I've talked about, but then also on a on the consciousness level. Like I mentioned to you before, I'm a consciousness hacker first. It's for me, like being an explorer, like who am I? What am I part of? And as the insights um, begin arising around that, how do we effectively turn those into something meaningful that can influence the world in a positive way? And that's where transformative technologies and myself, our visions align. It's like, how do we create technologies that matter? Technologies that can help uplift humanity as opposed to enslave it. And I think now at a time more than ever, we need to know ourselves um, better than the algorithms because the algorithms are learning us, right? So now that's what I'm proposing is, is, a, is a means to do that. You know, but at the end of the day, there's no guarantees. Like it's a, it's a matter of not only doing the work but knowing what to do, like having, like I said at the beginning, you know, taking the time to apply our attention here now and focus whilst we're going through this. So um, whilst I want to give you my best as part of this presentation, no, there's no guarantees. You still have to do the work. You still have to show up. You still have to bring your game to this. But it's about bringing your game in a way that has a holistic approach. It doesn't just buy into I'm going to you know, create my venture and burn out doing that. My... My mission to, is to you know, teach entrepreneurs where flow and purpose happens and how to optimize performance and how to realize greater levels of creativity. And then from there, explore like what else is possible. And I want you to experience the same freedom that I do, that I enjoy, you know, like enjoying my body, like freedom in my cognition, being able to take control of my attention amongst the mental noise, to be able to regulate my state, step out of overwhelm when I'm feeling it and find the clarity that you need to know what to do 
to have that greater sense of meaning that this is what to do and how, how to do it. And so that's what I propose to share with you today as part of these, this course, three key game changers, I call them. And so the first, bear with me one sec, is like you can ex exponentially elevate your health and well-being by understanding the single model around your brainwave state. So I'm going to go through that in a few moments. And then number two is like using true meditation. I get meditation, you know, it's become more and more mainstream. One of the reasons why I know about uh, as a long-term meditation practitioner is um, around the different brainwave states is, you know, 20, 10 years ago in the business space, teaching meditation in the business world, a lot of people's eyes would either roll back in their heads or they would glaze over. And so now meditation has become like this essential tool that all entrepreneurs need to have in their tool belt. And what I want to propose to share with you today is a, it's a sample of how to meditate yourself as opposed to using like a guided imagery or so forth. And then you, how we're using modern technologies to provide objective data. And that's what I love about this whole well-being space that we're moving into. It's moving out of the esoteric into more the objective scientific realm. So using objective data to move through the different brainwave states during waking states and deep sleep states of consciousness. And so for the biohacking, the, the biological components and the consciousness hacking components, like the, the, the two key things that I want to share with you here is that when you're optimizing your waking state by understanding the brainwave states and you've got a tool like meditation to be able to regulate those states, then it dramatically increases your ability, and I'll talk about this in, in, in just a moment, to be able to um, directly impact the quality of your sleep because we move through the same brainwave states. So if we're optimizing sleep, our, our sleep state, optimizing our wake state, and we're doing the practices there, it's at that point we can then look at our bodies and see what dysfunction may be stopping this. If, if we still haven't got the result that we need, it's that, that point that we're looking at in our bodies and we start doing relevant biohacking tests, such as testing our cortisol levels, our hormone levels, testing our gut permeability for leaky gut, because that has a direct impact on our brain's ability to be able to function. You know, gut health, there's a lot of research that's emerging that our gut health is directly linked to our ability to be able to concentrate and focus. And it's linked to, um, they're proving now that it's linked to early stages of on, uh, early onset of our al Alzheimer's. And so by, if, if we don't get the results that we, that we can from fundamentals like being able to regulate our state, through meditation um, and understanding the brainwave states and optimizing our sleep, there, there could very well be something like our hormone levels or well, gut health. And so that's when we test our gut microbiome and gut permeability. So the first key that I want to share with you though is just understanding the different brainwave states. And you'll see here, I'm just going to see if I've got the ability to be able to draw on this screen or not. Nope, seemingly not. So you'll see here that um, from a waking state, you see the eyeball on the top left and the, the sleeping eyeball eye on the bottom right, sorry, the bottom left, is that we move through these brainwave states throughout the course of a normal day from being wide awake to, to being sound asleep. And I'm going to just run through these. These are measured in hertz, and you can measure these with an EEG machine. And it's part of what we're doing now through the transformative technology movement is being able to understand like our brainwave states as we go about our day and being able to optimize ourselves and so just starting to explain this the beta state the beta state is an awake state a doing state it's a state where when we're multitasking but when we're multitasking what happens is our attention gets fractionated and when our attention gets fractionated we start to accumulate stress and anxiety and then that leads to worry overwhelm doubt and like i know like for the most of us in um in a modern world when you've got so many things pulling on our attention and you've got social apps and messengers and pop-ups and so forth 
it's um it's, we're finding ourselves more and more stuck in this beta state and it's causing a lot of the dysfunction that we see in in the world um it's very much a mind dominated state as well mind being a tool um as sorry the mind being the tool filled with our thoughts our memories our fears our hopes our our desires that mind made concept of self it becomes like a very much a mind dominated state so we become very full and it's like um the state we find ourselves in late at night unable to switch off and go to sleep because the mind's racing or well, the same thing waking up in the in 3 a.m in the morning and boom the mind kicks in and again unable to get back to sleep it's because yeah we, we get stuck in this beta state but below beta is like alpha alpha is like the single uh, a state where we're in a single focus we experience alpha like when we're reading a book uh, and we're just engrossed in that book or watching a movie um it's when we focused on a single task and the thing is there um we have a high output and high quality of work serotonin is released so we tend to feel good it's and we cycle through these i'm going to explain how we cycle through these in, in a moment when we go into a sleep state and then out of a sleep state um but alpha is like the flow like state we would have all experienced it often first thing in the morning you wake up you get almost like a day's worth of work done the first thing in the morning before the distractions and interruptions of the day start and again late at night um once the distractions and interruptions of the day finish going back into that sort of flow like state and so alpha is a really really powerful state and theta is a deepening of that the thing about theta it's like a it's like an absence of mind. We can experience theta through practicing meditation. Um, it's like a, a real um, sense of focused attention. We have a greater sense of connection to ourselves so we can hear our instinct. We can hear our insight. We can hear our intuition because the noise that the mind's making is, is, is switched off. And we have a greater sense of connection to um, not only ourselves, but to our macro environment. It's like the, the boundaries between ourselves and our environment become blurred. So it's a really powerful state to be in, particularly in business when you want to activate your intuition, your instinct, your sense of knowing. But the thing is, a lot of this is lost when we're living exclusively in this beta state, drinking more coffee, drinking more Red Bulls, trying to get to the next level of productivity. When really that's not going to happen because we're just amplifying that beta state when really what we need to do is take a step back slow down slow down the brain and by slowing down the brain we drop into this alpha and theta states where we get what we need super powerful states for you know being on point um greater sense of like knowing where we need to go and problem solving um I'll just jump into Delta. Delta is like a deep dreamless sleep. It's the bottom end of the sleep cycle. It's where we, our body regenerates each night. We spend up to two hours, sometimes two and a half hours a night in this Delta, deep um, brain rhythm, a brainwave, deep state of consciousness. Um, super important for regeneration and recovery for the next day. And if we're not getting effective Delta sleep, you're going to wake up groggy the next day. And often we see that in by measuring, and I'll talk about this more as I go forward, by measuring how much delta brain sleep or delta sleep we're, we're getting, how that's going to affect our performance day in, day out, and what, what we can actually do to optimize that. And so coming back up to gamma, I leave gamma for last because gamma is like this short, sharp burst. Gamma is like an insight and a ha moment. It's preceded by alpha. So we'll be in this alpha state and then we'll have like, it's almost like data bit, data bit, data bit, data bit. We're in this relaxed state and then boom, gamma spike. I have friends say they have, the, they have their best ideas on the toilet or the best ideas in the shower. And it's like, well, it's because you're taking time out, you've dropped in and bang, it's there, you have your insights. What I'm saying to you is we as a smart entrepreneur can actually cultivate these powerful states, alpha and theta, which trigger gamma, like on purpose, on point. And meditation is a, is a powerful tool to be able to, to, to do this. And this is one of the interventions that we can use and not only use, but we can measure 
using EEG technology, we are measuring you using EEG technology. So as to, you know what it's like when you're sitting in front of your computer, you've, you know, you've got to get something out, but your brain's just not working and you're just going back and forth, getting bloody nowhere. But by just taking 10 minutes out to go and drop into a meditation, you can, it's like taking back control. Like as we, we, we move out of alpha and into beta and we get distracted by this and our attention gets pulled in all these different directions, Meditation is almost the opposite of that. It's pulling your attention back. And as your attention gets pulled off, you just gently bring it back and back and back and back and back to the point where you've got then some level of control over your attention and then you can apply it. It's really powerful. And so this is just like an overview. And by understanding this, like meditation is just one intervention that we can use to really start hacking our performance and our potential. The thing is, the more time that you spend daily in the stillness uh, outside of beta, the more you have a greater sense of connection to yourself, greater sense of connection to your macro environment. Like I spend an hour a day in meditation and it's not what I'm suggesting you do right now, but people say like an hour a day, it seems like a waste of time. It's a lot of time to spend in meditation. And my, my, my thoughts back to them are, is it's better to spend an hour a day connecting to myself, connecting to the macro environment and spend 23 hours on purpose going in the right direction than to spend 24 hours a day lost in the mental noise, in the conditioning of the world, going in the wrong direction where you potentially use, lose months, years of your life and then realise, holy shit, I, was, I don't want to be where I am. And so I feel like it's such to, to invest that a little bit of time up front is, is so freaking powerful. When I was learning around this, I thought it'd be so cool if there was a thing that you could go to that would connect you into alpha and theta. And it turns out there is, it's planet earth. That's why spending time in nature is such a powerful recreational activity. You'll see the Hertz um, up the side there. Um, the earth's frequency, the human frequency, uh, frequency is seven to eight hertz so the frequency of the earth is seven eight hertz that's why spending time in nature camping and so forth is such a powerful recreational activity because it takes you out of that you know the the digital world and connects you into a sense of like stillness and who we are so this is really powerful guys i hope that you uh, you're getting this i hope you understand this because you know, this is a framework then plays into our sleep as well because um, looking at it from a waking state of consciousness, we go over on the other side, I believe, yeah, this is sort of backwards, but if we can just imagine in the middle there, you know, we've got us in the body and then what I've just shown you is how we use this to regulate our state going down into a waking state of consciousness. But then on to the other side, down into the sleep state, we go down into um, each night, we go into a REM brainwave rhythm when we have uh, the dreaming state and then into NREM, which is the deep dream, the deep state. So the REM is um, around uh, alpha and theta. So we start out in a beta and wake state and then as melatonin starts, it's onset in the evening, typically in a healthy person. Well, then we get more into more into alpha and if we allow ourselves, then we slowly drift down into, you know, theta, into the dreaming states, and then into delta, which is the deep sleep state where we get our regeneration and we cycle into that, in and out of that in 90 minute increments. So we get a lot of our delta sleep early at night, um, up to two hours, two and a half hours. And then as it gets closer to morning, then we get our REM sleep. So if you're someone who doesn't, and REM is when we're dreaming, so if you're someone that um, doesn't dream, it might be that you're getting up too early and you're cutting off that dream space. Like typically, like for me now, I'm aiming for seven and a half, eight hours a night. And, and knowing that this is going to elevate my performance because I'm going to you know, wake up, cycle up out of alpha. And so then I meditate, take control of my attention. And then from there, it's like, where, how am I directing my attention? There's a whole number of different hacks that we can look at about how we apply our attention and how we keep our attention focused throughout the day. And then if we lose our, like we get distracted and interrupted and find ourselves in that beta state, what we can do to then bring our attention back and then reapply it. It's about, you know, optimizing our output, optimizing our performance day to day.
But then if you haven't had a good night's sleep, well, then we're kind of in this negative cycle of not enough sleep, tired, drinking too much coffee, too many stimulants, which is affecting then our sleep. And it can be this nasty cycle. So by getting objective data on all this, we can then um, start intervening in where, where it's important, taking practical steps. So I just wanted to really... Um, now just talk about meditation. Like I so said, for me, meditation, um, there's lots of different forms. of a lot of great apps, like there's uh, Calm is a big one, Headspace is a big one. And um, they're, they're, they're awesome. They have these guided um, meditations which help to shift your state, shift you from that beta state down into alpha and theta and, and so forth. But what I want to share with you today, like what I've learned in my consciousness hacking years is that there's a space outside of that as well you know like this is a, probably a big leap for us to make here on this call but i want to um share with you all the same is that um it challenges that we're actually not the mind we're not that mind made concept of self and there comes a point in meditation where we start pulling our attention like holding our attention still and it'll get lost in a thought or a memory and you get lost in a story and then you gently bring it back and then you gently bring it back and that just happens so it's a practice of gently bringing your attention back because our attention is really powerful right where we apply that again you, you felt this i know you felt that when you're applying your attention you know your output goes up astronomically as opposed to when you're distracted and all over the place and you we're freaking hopeless right so what I'm saying to you is the next level of this is when you're holding your attention, when you're able to hold your attention and the mind is trying to take you into a story, into a thought, when you're holding your attention. And there comes a point where you become the observer of those thoughts, of those uh, feelings, of those hopes and desires. You're no longer in those thoughts. You're no longer, you're no longer those thoughts because you're, 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 you're outside of them. And that's, that's really like, it, it's the next level of, you know, when we talk about elevating human consciousness, what we're doing there is we're going from being the participant lost in thought to now being an observer and the participant. So we're able to play two roles. And this is really freaking powerful guys, because this changes everything because then you can then start influencing that participant and changing the things about this participant that are suboptimal. And this is where consciousness hacking, biohacking gets really, really cool because those stories, we can then start influencing those stories because we're not those stories. Really freaking powerful. But I get it. Like meditation um, can be really hard to learn if you've ever tried and you've failed. I want you to encourage you to try again. And uh, um, I've got a really special offer at the end of this um, if you hang around, but fundamentally it's um, it's really hard just to sit and try to hold your attention still. But there's a process, there's a stack. You know, we can stack simple things like releasing tension, we have tension build up in our body. So release that tension, learning a practical process to be able to release that tension periodically. It gives more freedom in our bodies. Releasing emotion, we've never been taught how to effectively process emotion. Often emotion will get triggered because something's happened to us and our attention is getting, it's trying to, like our mind is trying to pull, it's trying to pull out on, on our um, on our attention and we're not, we're resisting it. You know, if it's a negative emotion, emotion, negative emotion, we're often pushing against it, resisting it. But what, by simply having, a, and I'm going to just do a really quick example of this in a minute, um, by simply just giving our attention to that emotion, it, it passes through and it, we drop through. And if we can just spend like a few minutes a day doing this, we drop through into a state of um, back into homeostasis. And then right breathing, the breath is connected to the central nervous system. So we can shift our state from a parasympathetic state, sorry, from a sympathetic state, which is fight or flight, into a parasympathetic state, which is um, flow, ease and activates more of the prefrontal cortex as opposed to our uh, ancient, like the amygdala, the, 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 the fight or fight brain. And it's then we're ready to start observing the mind where we can get outside the mind. So it's part of the practice that I teach. Um, 
I might, uh, I'll just quickly do a one, one minute exercise. I'm just conscious of time and I've got 15 minutes to go. I just want to quickly show you like a re releasing emotion. Um, five minutes remaining. Oh, okay, 50 minutes. All right, I'm going to keep going in that case. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Um, so reach out to me um, and um, I will be happy to guide you through that. So the third one is, um, sorry, I jumped through my slides here. Where am I? The third one is um, how we're using modern technologies to, to create, to generate objective data around these. And so for me, like, Starting out, and this is what I want to position with you, starting out with this biohacking and consciousness hacking is um, like it can be overwhelming when you look at like um, Ben Greenfield's Boundless book. There's just so many different things that we can do, but I don't think we have to start there. That can just be overwhelming. It's like the two things that really matter as an entrepreneur, as a founder, is our sleep and being able to regulate our state, our emotional state throughout the day so that we can optimize our performance and then ultimately our potential. And so I just want to show you how we're using um, technologies. And this is like through transformative technologies. These are the sorts of tech that we're supporting development around. I'm just going to flick through a whole bunch of them, sleep and um, VR, AR, behavioral change. There's focus ones, um, pattern recognition. There's a whole bunch of different ones. But the key ones that I'm focusing in around is like um, EEG, like being able to measure your brain frequency. There's Muse, which is one that we use. There's Focus Band is another um, yeah, EEG device, neurofeedback device. Um, and then Aura is a, like there's a great sleep trackers and a whole bunch of different sleep trackers. But the thing is, guys, this can just be, again, more data, more overwhelming unless we know how to apply this data. And so that's why we've you know put together this expert panel like, Kylie Clooney, she's um, the health scientist. And what, what we've done is like, I, so in, in teaching meditation and helping people when we're tracking sleep and we're taking care of fundamental sleep, um, what we're learning is that um, sometimes people have already done biological damage to these beautiful avatars, their bodies. And so then we need to look at doing some key bio testing. And that's where we start testing cortisol levels, testing hormone levels, testing... Uh, gut health, micro gut microbiome to see if there's any any um, bacteria or parasites in there that are, are affecting our ability to be able to function. The same with, um, and that's like I was saying, there's so much of that going on that's flying under the radar with bacteria that are influencing our behaviour, and, and we and we don't know about it. So it's like measuring this, but then at the same time using that information in a meaningful way so that we can then optimise ourselves. And fundamentally, there's an opportunity for us to do this with you. Like we've got this expert team um, and I've basically put together this program called Biohacking and Consciousness Hacking um, where we can essentially get you started. Um, a lot of you may already have sleep trackers, which is awesome. Um, like I said, this is just a starting point. We find that sleep and being able to regulate your emotional state day to day uh, are the keys to doing that. So if you are interested in... Um, learning more about this I, I think i have one minute left i want to encourage you to reach out um the best way to do that is through my contact details i believe that you that we all have them but if not go to a consult.iamconnected.com and you can fill out a, um, a a consulting request form there and book in a time to to connect with me so just in summary guys like the keys um to this, I feel like as a framework is understanding that those brainwave states and then how that affects our sleep. Um, if we get caught in that beta state, then it's hard to, you, you won't go to sleep. How going to sleep is a natural progression going down out of beta into alpha and into theta and then down into delta and then cycling back up. Um, and then the same with um, waking state, we get stuck in that beta and it's being able to regulate our state down the other side. I think that's all the time i got, guys. I wanted to uh, just give a shout out, big love. If anybody's interested in learning more about this, you know, this is just scratching the surface. Big love to you all. Thank you.